Folks, Bang Average Fishing, how are we doing? I hope we're all having a splendid day wherever we are today. And I'm here in a beautiful, beautiful forest here in Japan. I've got a little drop shot rod with me, I've got a pot of worms, and I'm gonna see what is in this unbelievable looking glacial lake. We're looking for Hangetsu Lake, AKA Half Moon Lake. Now, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work that out, does it really? But it's shaped in the crescent of a moon, which is Pretty freaking cool, I have to be honest with you. I don't know what's in here, could be anything. Could be trout, could be carp, could be tench for all I know. But it is a beautiful, beautiful spot to be fishing. And that's why I'm here today. Doesn't matter if we don't catch anything. When you're fishing somewhere like this, who cares? Who cares one little bit? And for me, that is what fishing is all about. It's about going to unbelievable places like this and just exploring. And that's really what this channel is all about. There's no fakeness, it's just genuine excitement and genuine love for the sport that we do. There's so much diversity in terms of the trees here. You've got everything from cherry blossoms, silver birch, sycamore, you name it, it's here. And that's a sign of a very, very healthy environment. This is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. And we've just come down to the water's edge now. Insane, absolutely insane. It's so quiet as well. You can hear everything, every little bird, every Japanese wobbler. What more could you bloody ask for? Doing a bit of core as always and what I'm doing is I'm walking a little bit further along there's a little tiny path that looks fairly explorable and I'm hopeful oh my god I nearly fell in then very thin path as you can probably tell walking through the bamboos and that. I'm aiming to fish around that stony ledge I have a feeling there's gonna be a bit of a channel there maybe a little bit of shallower water to start with then we're gonna try and work our way round, but come on, let's get in the water, let's get fishing. When you're fishing waters like this, you don't really know what's in it. You don't have a clue what to expect. Bait is always a good way to start. And by that, I don't mean using artificial chemical baits like boilies or anything like that. I mean proper natural baits. Worms. Worms are always the go-to bait, especially when you're fishing waters like this. Every little fish in here will definitely be up for a worm. So that's exactly what we've gone and got. Whiz to the tackle shop and we got some absolute beauties. A perfect bait when you're fishing on waters like this. And method wise, we're using a little drop shot rig SG weight, I don't know what size hook this is. It was a random hook I picked out of my box. I need to buy some hooks. I've been traveling for three months, guys. Cut me some slack, all right? And then what I'll probably gradually do is work my way around the lake a little bit and try and get more in the sun, which now probably sounds a little bit mad, but when you're fishing these glacial lakes that are freezing cold, the fish naturally are moving to where the warmer water is. I'm currently sat in the shade in a quite a cold little spot. So over there, there might be a few fish, and I'll be a bit warmer as well, I'll be honest. Oh, just had a follow. Thought we had a little knock, you know. I was bringing it in and I was like, is that the bottom? That's a good sign. Don't know what it was though. There we go. Proper fish rise over in that corner. Right, let's go. Let's go, go, go.
don't know how well you can see it because of the sunlight to be honest with you it's really making it quite difficult to film but just off this log there's like the biggest shoal of fish I've ever seen they're not very big but if there's shoals of fish that big there's got to be something else and all of a sudden the sun's come out and they're jumping everywhere working my way through vines probably for a fish that's the size of a fucking it's half the size of a saucepan I've taken my weight off because they're not seeming to bite it on the bottom they're on the surface just dangle something in can't figure out what they are it's not often that something turns a worm down they're curious but they're not they're not going for it actually I think I know what's happening here I think they're seeing the line beforehand <laughs> There's a fish right there. Yep, we're in. Yes, we're on. I saw him, I dropped it in on him. It's not big. I think it's a cruising. It looks exactly like a cruising carp. They're only small. What a fish. I think it is a cruising carp. Well then, what a turn up for the box. Look at this lad. It's almost, looks like a common. But it doesn't. I don't really know what you think of it. Like, look. It looks like a baby common carp, but it doesn't. And maybe it's because of this glacial structure here. Look at the pattern on it. I don't know. I really can't work this out. I think it's a type of carp. It's got to be. But the mouth on it is a little upturned, isn't it? It's almost got roach vibes. I'm not really sure, but let's get the guy back. Go on, sir. And off he goes. Yeah, we're in. We're in again. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Old gums blazing. This one's a bit smaller than the previous one. And a lot thinner. Sorry, I think you're getting a full crotch shot there. But, oh, ow, old fire. They've got really sharp dorsal fins. Ow, frick. I'm gonna get him in the net, I think. So he snagged me as well. What a knobhead. What's just happened here? <laughs> so that fish have a proper sharp little dorsal fin. He's just gone under here and snagged me. What's he doing? I'm gonna have to hand line this lad out. Well, not bad, and he's just spat the hook. That's mental, and I just saw some prawns then as well. What a mental twist of fate. That fish had a really sharp little dorsal on it. So I was just gonna put him in the net and get my forceps, rather than just quickly flick the hook out. And then he rammed under this rock, and then he just spat the hook out. I just watched him go, Pff. They've gotta be related to carp, haven't they? Only carp do that. Are these like little special glacial carp that don't grow that big? And they've just changed, they've just adapted because they live in here. I had an absolute mare there though, didn't I? I don't think that's the only thing I can say to that. Right folks, a little change of tact. I'm going to do anything I can just to shrink this hook bait. I think our hook is a little bit too big, so it's putting them off slightly. They can see everything in this water, even though it is a little tingy green. But I'm going to dig in here, hopefully I'll find a size 14 or something tiny. Who bloody knows? Come on, hopefully there's something in here. Hello, hello. We found a tiny little hook. Oh, flipping happy days. I think this will make the mustard, you know. I think it's gonna make the little difference that we need here. There's a fish right here and he's just gobbling the worm. I'm letting him suck it all in. Got him. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's fighting really hard. Looks a bit different. It is, it's a different species of fish. I don't know what though. He's in. Oh my god. That's like an iridescent one. What on earth? Now sod's law folks, I thought I was recording but I wasn't. But we've ended up catching two here. And they're very different fish. Which is quite interesting I think. So we're gonna have a proper look at them. Try and work out what species these are. Now I don't typically like to keep fish in the net. But I think it's interesting to do here. Because look at them. 
they differ quite contrastingly. These fish are so different, man. Look at them. I, I can't work it out. Like, look at the colours on, on the one on the right and then compared to the one on the, the golden one. And actually, one's got an upturned lip. Uh, no, they've got, sort of got the same lip. But the eyes do look different as well. Give me the impression they're carp of some capacity. I don't really know. But I'm going to get these back before a crow decides to eat them. Yeah, that's genuinely what happens. Crows will take stuff out your hand here. No messing about. I don't want these fish to die. There you go, mate. Off you go. Bing. And number two. Come here, mate. You're my favourite. You're an absolute stunner. What an unbelievable colouring on you. Hey, off he goes. Folks, very interested to hear your thoughts here because there's no inflow and there's no outflow. It's just really snow melt. So I'm a little bit confused as to one, how these fish are here. Like, what, what, what are they doing here? But then to have two different sort of colours on the same type of species is really, really random. And the only thing I can say maybe is because it is sort of landlocked. It's probably its own little ecosystem. I don't know. It's pretty mad though. God, happy bloody days, man. <laughs> We had a bit of a trek up there, not much was really going on unfortunately. It's one of those, you can't always have it your own way, right? But we've come back to where we were before, where we were having a few bites. We're going to have a quick little throw and then we're probably going to call it a day there. When you're fishing places like this, don't hammer it for hours and hours and hours. Give it a couple of hours, they can move. These fish are so, so sensitive. If they're never fished for, then when you put a line in there, it's all gun ho. So just be a little bit sustainable with it. Be conservative, have a couple of hours of fun, make your move and it means you have it forever and ever and ever. But anyway, let's give it another 10 minutes or so, see if we can pull out another one, and then we'll make a move. This has been proper fun. I mean, it's so interesting just seeing the different colorations on those fish. Like, one being that golden color, then one being that gray. And I have to think they are carp. And they're probably really small because of how cold this water is in winter. Like, I can imagine this freezes over when it gets down to minus seven, minus 10, which is what it does here in winter, which is pretty flipping mental, to be honest. And it's pretty mad to find carp in this colder water as well. But they seem to be here in Japan in the cold waters. It's fascinating. It really is. Smashing stuff anyway, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, hit that subscribe button. Makes a hell of a difference. And I'll see you later on. Tight lines. Keep fishing.